From the corner of a room came a sound that defies mortal logic. What emerged as the source of that sound would make any sane person go mad. Welcome to Monster of the Week. This week, we're talking about something truly terrifying, the Chaos Beast. We're going to talk about what a Chaos Beast is, why they're so awesome, and of course some plot hooks for your game. So let's get started. The Chaos Beast is a formless abomination. There's no telling what it will look like from one moment to the next since its form is constantly shifting. One thing you can be sure of, however, is that it's going to be very unpleasant. Regardless of what form it takes, it always weighs around 200 pounds, but this form is literally changing from moment to moment. Regardless of what it looks like at any given time though, it does only get two claw attacks. Although that doesn't really matter too much. The Chaos Beast does doesn't intend to kill with its claws, it merely needs to strike its opponent. Any creature simply struck by a Chaos Beast must succeed on a constitution save. If the creature fails, it becomes a spongy, amorphous mass. Its form simply melts into a chaotic mess that's very difficult if not impossible to control. The afflicted creature can't hold or use any item, all clothing and armor becomes completely useless, and any equipment the creature is carrying becomes more of a burden, inflicting a negative 4 to the creature's dexterity score. Their speed is reduced by 10, and the creature suddenly confusion and pain coursing through its body causes it to lash out at anything nearby, whether it be friend or foe. That said though, regardless of who they attack, there's always a 50% miss chance and they get a negative 4 to their attack roll. Although if you're playing in 5th edition, I would simply give them a 50% miss chance and disadvantage. As if all that wasn't bad enough, the worst part of this ability is yet to come. Every round the creatures in this form causes one point of wisdom drain. If the victim's wisdom drops to a zero, then it becomes a chaos beast. Since corporeal instability isn't a disease, or a curse, it's very tough to get rid of. The only way to do so is by casting either a heal or restoration spell. As for the Chaos Beast itself, it's mostly immune to any shape-changing effects. Should you try to polymorph or petrify a Chaos Beast, it will seem to work at first, but at the beginning of the Chaos Beast round, as a free action, it simply returns to its mutable form. So aside from being totally disgusting and giving your players an affliction, the Chaos Beast has this air of eldritch and forbidden magic about it. In fact, most Chaos Beasts come to be due to some spellcaster experimenting with things it shouldn't be. In the past, I've had my players encounter a wizard character who's afflicted himself with corporeal instability, usually by seeking immortality, and it can be a great adventure for the players to try to help this wizard find a cure for his affliction. If they succeed, then oftentimes they've made a very powerful friend in this wizard. If they take too long and they fail, then they've got an encounter on their hands with a Chaos Beast. Speaking of encounters, should your players fight a Chaos Beast and one of them becomes afflicted? In addition to the fear and panic in the moment, it can be really funny to watch the party's fighter try to keep it together while they walk through town looking for a cleric. If you wanted to go with something a little bit more involved, you could do a quest line where a Chaos Beast somehow gets loose in a small town. It can then become a race against time for the players to try to stop the affliction while looking for a cure and protecting the citizens who haven't been turned yet. It's a nice spin on the zombie infestation type of adventure. Except instead of zombies, the party has to deal with multi mouth amorphous hell beasts with numerous eyes that live as an ever-shifting source of nightmare fuel. But even if you do just use them as an encounter, it's sure to be terrifying, leave a lasting impression on your players, and ultimately should be very interesting. Especially if they don't have a cleric in the group. Well, that is all for this week. A little bit of a shorter video this week, but due to responsibilities, I wasn't able to make it too much longer. That said though, you should look forward to two videos next week. Of course, we'll have our usual monster of the week and a little something else. So hopefully you found this video useful and hopefully your Chaos Beast related schemes come to fruition. And if you like what I do here, please be sure to subscribe. I have one new video every week at least. And as always, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.